All right, so in the last tutorial, you learned how to create a matte effect, and now we're going to enhance that image with a retro effect with some dust textures and more. And here's what the final edit is going to look like. How cool is that? I love it. So if you're ready, let's do it. So the first thing we're going to do is work non-destructively by duplicating this layer. Let's rename this desaturate, and that's because we're going to reduce the saturation of the image, which I like to use when I create my retro vintage type of effects. So we're going to go up to colors and select hue saturation. And I'm going to drop the saturation down. Usually for vintage retro photos, I like to do around minus 50 to minus 80. But I think for this image, because we reduced the overall contrast. We don't need to reduce the saturation as much. So I'm going to go right around 10 for this project. All right, so we have some resources that you can add to this image to create the final retro effect, which are these files right here, five through seven. So go to your section five folder, locate them, click and drag them to the canvas. Again, if this doesn't work for you, go up to File and select Open as Layers to add the layers. Now we need to rotate and resize these layers to fill the entire canvas. So let's start with this first layer here. These are the scratches. So we're gonna go ahead and go up to Layer, Transform, and select Rotate to, well, rotate it. Then we're gonna grab our Scale Tool with Shift plus S. And then I'm just going to click on the corners here or on the inside corners here and resize and stretch that out to go outside of that canvas. Go ahead and click scale. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn that layer off and let's do the same thing for this layer. And one more. So we need to rotate this one as well. So back to transform and rotate. Perfect. All right, let's work on this layer here. I'm going to go ahead and double click and rename this dust. And I think I want to drop the opacity down to around 50 to 60. Now we have white dust, but dust really isn't white. So what we can do is we can convert this white color to black by going up to, let's go to colors and select invert. And now, well, can't see it now. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. Well, we can see it a little bit, but if you can't see it, go ahead and increase your opacity to show those specks of dust a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and zoom all the way back out, and I think I want to increase that opacity just a little bit more. I want it to be visible when I'm zoomed all the way out. So right there looks pretty good. All right, now that I'm looking at this black dust, I'm not sure if I want black dust. <laughs> what do you think? White or black? And again, I guess this really depends on your creative vision because the dust particles on a print enlargement are going to occur in two different ways. One, it can occur during the printing process. So back in the old days when we did our own printing in a dark room, if there was dust on the paper or the film, it would tend to be white on the final print. But when you lay your print out or hang it on the wall and you don't have glass on it, dust and dirt builds up and then that dust and dirt is gray or black and not white. So I guess I'll leave that entirely up to you based on your creative vision. I think I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like it is for now. Also, don't forget, we can also use a layer mask if you need to remove some of that dust where you don't want it. For example, I probably don't want it on her tooth right here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a white layer mask. And then with our paintbrush tool here, we can go ahead and, whoops, I did the opacity. I want to make this smaller. We can go ahead and paint with black to remove the dust as needed. So I like that better. So Command or Control, Shift plus J to zoom all the way out. All right, let's go ahead and grab our texture layer here. Let's go ahead and rename it Texture. And let's go ahead and turn it on. Now we need to blend this in with the layers below. So we're going to go up to mode here and let's go with soft light. I think I like this effect. You may want to try one of the other blending modes to see if you can find something else that you like or maybe you just want to use soft light. Again, I'll leave that up to you. All right, we now have our scratches here. So let's go ahead and rename that and add that in there. 
And we also need to change the blending mode for this as well. And for this one, let's go with screen. All right, that's a little bit too intense for me. So I'm gonna drop that opacity down and just kind of blend it in a little bit more. So maybe right around 40 to 50. I think I'm liking that right there. And I think this big scratch on her lip right here is kind of distracting. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that one with a white layer mask. And let's go ahead and get rid of that. There we go, I like that better. All right, so the next step is aging the image just a little bit. So when you leave your images out in the open and they're exposed to light, the chemicals used will tend to change and degrade that print over time. And not only will they fade, which we already did in the previous tutorial, but they will also begin to change colors because those chemicals are reacting with the light and they tend to shift colors from left to right or orange to blue or whatever the case may be. So let's go ahead and create a new layer by clicking right here. And let's call it color, color fade. And then for fill width, make sure you have transparency and click OK. All right, grab your brush tool with the letter P. And for the foreground color, I'm going to choose this orange color right here. So if you want to use the same color, just type in this hexadecimal number right here, click OK. And then we need a really, really large brush because I want to cover about a third of the image with this color. So I'm going to come over here and drag it to the right, right around 1300 or so, maybe a little larger. And what I want to do is I want to drop the opacity of the brush because I don't want a solid color. And I'm just going to click here and there just to add the color randomly in different places. You may want to go a little lower on that opacity and then just go ahead and add it to the new layer. Now, don't worry about what it looks like now because we're going to blend that in in just a second. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change to a different color. I want to choose a contrasting color. So let's go inside here. And I believe I used this color on my final edit. You may want to go a little darker with that. So here's the hexadecimal that I'm going to use. Go ahead and click OK. And then just in a different spot, go ahead and add that blue color randomly and make sure it's not filling in a solid color. You just want to bring in a little bit of that blue tint into the image like so. If you wanted to, you could overlap the colors a little bit as well just to mix it up a little bit more. All right, so that's not looking too good right now. So let's go ahead and blend this layer in by changing the blend mode to soft light. So we have just a touch of a color shift in it. And if you need to add more, you can go ahead and continue painting across the image to add more color if that's something you want to do. I think I want to add some more orange here. Actually, I think I did too much now. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that opacity down of that layer just a little bit to right around 80 to 90. So there's the before and the after. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to add some grain because a retro image wouldn't be complete without any. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. Let's call it grain. And let's go to our foreground color swatch here and let's choose a mid gray color. Actually, I need to go back now. And we need to fill with the foreground color. And the reason why we're filling it in with the color is because the filter that we're going to use requires some color in order to add the grain. And the color gray, the mid gray, is a good starting point. So let's go ahead and click OK. All right, let's go up to filters, down to noise, and let's select HSV noise. All right, so we're going to increase the value to add more grain. And of course, the higher you go, the more you will add. So I'm going to go pretty high here. So maybe right around one or so. And depending on the speed of your computer will determine how fast it generates the grain for you. Now, I do want to get rid of the saturation in the grain. So I'm going to drop the saturation down to zero. And if I want to change the randomness of the grain, I can adjust the dulling. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to around three. All right, so we don't have to wait for this to complete generating. So let's go ahead and click OK. And now we're going to go up to our mode here and change the blend mode to soft light. And boom, we have our grain.
All right, real quick, let's take a look at the before and after. And here's a quick tip on how to do that quickly and easily. We're going to scroll all the way down to our first image layer here. We're going to hold down our shift key and then we're going to click right here on this little eye icon. And there's the before and the after. How cool is that? I love it.